Brian Lehrer on WNYC, live in the green space today. And with us on the phone for a few minutes is Governor Andrew Cuomo. Good morning, Governor, and talk about a speakerphone. We have about 100 people here in the green space eavesdropping on us this morning. Want to say hello? Hello, 100 people. Good to be with you. Um, First, uh, we were talking earlier to members of the uh, state Senate, the newly Democratic majority state Senate. Do you want to give us maybe your top two priorities for this legislation, uh, legislative session with Democratic control making things a lot more possible? Oh, I don't have two. uh, I've been uh, governor for eight years, uh, Brian, and I've had a Republican Senate for all that time, and they frustrated a lot of progressive measures. We've gotten a lot done, frankly. Uh, if I had ever told you we could get marriage equality and $15 minimum wage and free college tuition and gun laws with a Republican Senate, you would have thought I was uh, experimenting with recreational marijuana. But uh, with a Democratic Senate, uh, we can now get done uh, a host of issues that we haven't been able to get done. Reproductive Health Act, Contraceptive Care Act, Child Victims Act, Ethics Reform, Campaign Finance Reform. Uh, so I think we're going to have an historic 100 days, uh, and this state is already the most progressive state in the nation. But you give us this 100 days, and I think we're going to set a new standard. Um, well, you mentioned recreational marijuana. Uh, what do you see as the biggest obstacle or controversy, controversy to be resolved? I think we're going to pass it. I think there's a myriad of opinion among local governments. You know, you're in New York City. Uh, that's one mentality and one, uh, uh, one perspective. This is a very diverse state, and you tend to forget that in New York City. Uh, so we have to come up with a piece of legislation that has governments all across the state participating. Suffolk, Buffalo, Erie, Syracuse, the North Country, where the political dynamic is much different. So that's going to be the challenge. But I believe we get it done. Does that mean uh, the ability of places to opt out, or are you referring to what Mayor de Blasio wants, which is local control uh, over the the, uh, the franchises so that it can be used to help um, communities that have been suffering under the existing marijuana laws? Well, I think everybody wants to help the communities that have been suffering, uh, right? Part of this is... Uh, has a criminal justice aspect, but there's also an economic empowerment aspect here. This is going to be big business on two levels. Number one, uh, we'll have revenue generated. But number two, uh, we want to help the people and the communities that have been decimated uh, and make sure that they're participating in this economic opportunity. And it's not just uh, rich corporations who come in and bankroll uh, the situation. So I think everyone agrees with that philosophical approach. Uh, It is going to be a question of a statewide regulatory system that is both consistent somewhat with Nassau and Massachusetts, because just as a practical matter, we have it in the surrounding states, and we don't want to have people driving across the border uh, and out shopping us. Uh, And second, we need a statewide framework that establishes basic rules. What are the quantities? What are the ages? uh, What's an eligible franchise? uh, What background check, et cetera? So you need a statewide system. uh, But I think everybody agrees with the philosophy of make sure this is an economic opportunity for the communities that paid the cost. Do you have any L-Train update for us this morning? Um, I uh, am very excited. This was an impending, uh, uh, not whatever they call it, an apocalypse. You know, New Yorkers are a tough group, but this was going to be a real uh, pain in the neck. Uh, and 225,000 people affected. The I am so grateful to Cornell and Columbia who really put together a team of experts who had international experience and were a real value added. The workup of the idea has been done by the MTA and the same designers who designed the original plan 
So it's not that academics put together the, the plan. They had the idea, Brian, but the uh, designers of the tunnel, uh, the consultants and the MTA, actually reviewed the idea, incorporated the idea, planned the idea, and they said it works. So uh, I believe it's going to happen. I believe it's going to be a tremendous boost because it would have been a colossal uh, headache uh, with traffic, uh, with trains. It was affecting real estate value. So it's uh, it's a great way to start the new year as far as I'm concerned. Um, you said you will need the approval of the MTA board and would call an emergency meeting, but I've also heard you can't get all those, uh, you can't herd all those cats together before the next regularly scheduled meeting. So when do you expect them to meet? They meet when they meet, you know, God bless them, the MTA board, the 17 people. Uh, my two cents was they should do it as soon as possible so people have certainty. Uh, again, it is the MTA's designers who are now recommending this. Uh, they've worked on it for uh, a couple of months now, about, and they have all the plans and they're recommending it. So it's the same group that the MTA relied on to do the first plan uh, that's now recommending this advice, uh, the revised plan. So uh, I don't think uh, there's going to be that much to discuss, but I think New Yorkers want to know. You know, there's a, there's a, they've been talking about this for years. They had plans, alternative plans, contingency plans. Let people know what the decision is and herd cats and get them to come in a room and have the meeting and make a decision and tell New Yorkers. There may be full Democratic control of the branches in Albany now, but there isn't um, full uh, comity, CO. M I T Y. Uh, there, the Times reported it yesterday as there are the escalating threats over who will investigate the other more. Uh, several Democratic legislative leaders have promised to make the legislature a more robu robust investigative body open to probes of the governor's office. And it says Mr. Cuomo, in turn, threatened to investigate them right back in what he called an investigations battle. Are we seeing weaponization of um, ethics concerns? No. And if the Times reported that, the Times is incorrect. The uh, full comity, uh, your spelling, uh, I don't know that you ever have in government. I don't know that you ever should, by the way. There should be a healthy tension. Uh, I just want to avoid full comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y, right? <laughs> That's what we have in Washington right now. Uh, we have a Democratic governor, Democratic Senate, Democratic Assembly. Uh, we've had this before, uh, 2009, and we had full comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y. Uh, they passed absolutely nothing. It was a debacle. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to the exact opposite, which is why we have this dysfunction and negativity in Washington we actually have the most progressive 100 days in this state's history. And I believe we will have that. Uh, on this, uh, I'll investigate you, you investigate me. Uh, that uh, that uh, brings uh, bad news for everyone. The Senate is now having a discussion where the Republicans in the Senate and the Democrats in the Senate are fighting about the Ethics Commission, which does the investigations. And I said this morning, look, uh, nowadays, uh, anybody can investigate anybody. Uh, I don't care who's in charge of the Senate Ethics Committee. Any senator can send a letter to uh, the state inspector general and accuse a senator of uh, taking a donation and then uh, passing a piece of legislation or uh, uh, one thing or another, and now you have subpoenas, and now you're where Washington is uh, with uh, fighting amongst themselves and not doing the people's business. So the legislature has a role in oversight. The executive has a role. Uh, it's maturity. It's discretion. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, non-retaliation, 
And it's not about some internal power battle between Democrats and Republicans. Get things done. Why do we have President Trump? Because people were disgusted with government. They just didn't believe it worked. They didn't believe it helped them. It was all negativity, and he touched that anxiety. And he said, I'll go down to Washington, drain the swamp. They're all a bunch of bums. Uh, don't be a bunch of bums. Uh, be people who do good things and make a difference, which is what we've done, Brian. You know, $15 minimum wage, that helped 4 million people. Salaries went from 18000 to $30,000. You know what that means? It means more food on the table. Uh, it means a better quality of life. Uh, there's so much good that needs to be done. Focus on that and not your own internal ego in politics. Let me ask you a campaign finance question. I know you've talked for years about closing the LLC loophole, which is used so much by people in the real estate industry. And last time you were on, you took a clear position uh, that you would like to close the vacancy or end vacancy decontrol that landlords can use to get apartments out of rent stabilization. But the real estate industry, I understand, has been donating more heavily to Democrats than in the past because they have control of the Senate now. Um, what other kinds of campaign finance reforms do you think uh, you would like the legislature to to enact this year? And do you have a position on another um, real estate conflict, which is that they can use um, the, uh, when, that? Uh, sorry, they can use major capital improvements to get out of rent stabilization? Yeah. Uh, look, as I mentioned before, I am liberated. You know, eight years I've had to compromise half a loaf to get it past the Republican Senate. Uh, so I am hyper-aggressive now. Uh, I would close the LLC loophole. I would take it a step further. No corporate contributions, period, uh, on rate, uh, rent control. Uh, um, I think on the MCI issue, it's been abused, major capital improvement. I would limit that to the investment made and the useful life not that you put in a major capital improvement and you uh, continually increase the rent because of it. Uh, something called preferential rents has to be reformed. Uh, so I'm going to be very aggressive on it all across the board. I support public finance, as you know. Uh, I support freedom of information law for the legislative and the executive. The New York State Legislature doesn't have a freedom of information law. It's like we're in the dark ages. The Republican Senate has stopped it. Senator Kruger tried to get it passed. Senator Squadron, Assemblyman Danny O'Donnell. Let's get that passed. Uh, no, they, these 100 days for me, Brian, this is a liberation. Let's get it done. Uh, the Senate majority is... Uh, is going to be under the new leadership of Senator uh, Andrea Stewart-Cousins. It's the politics on the Senate side are probably the most difficult politics in the building, in the Capitol, because for a Senate Democratic majority to exist, it means they won what's called marginal seats, right? Uh, you won seats in Suffolk, you won seats in Nassau, you won seats in Westchester, Rockland, which can be Democratic or Republican. So to the extent there's, a, I think, going to be a, a moderating concern, we have to make sure we maintain the majority. Uh, but I'm going to be hyper-aggressive, uh, um, not just by personality, but I'm going to be hyper-aggressive politically. And, and last thing, um, we always appreciate when you make time for us to come on this program, um, but the mayor is giving the state of the city speech right now, meaning you're not listening to the mayor's speech. <laughs> Did you read it or anything you want to react to from the state of the city that you're pretty aware of? The, uh, I am not listening to it right now. I'm in Albany, and uh, 
Uh, we're doing some work here. I do my budget, state of the state, on Tuesday, which is the equivalent of the state of the city. So I'm working on that. Uh, but as soon as he is done, I'm going to talk to him about it. I'm going to read a copy, and my people are listening now and going through it. Uh, I want to make sure uh, any way I can be of help to the city that we are. Uh, I want to make sure for me on the top of the list uh, for the city agenda is going to be the MTA. Uh, this is madness. The MTA uh, was created in the 60s. It was designed to make sure no public official had control or accountability because it set fares and no politician wanted to be near setting fares. So it's this convoluted, you have a board, I have six votes, but it's a 17-member board, but the speaker has a unilateral veto, but the Senate leader has a unilateral veto, but the mayor has a unilateral veto. Uh, it is just a dysfunctional organization. And that has to change, and then we need a funding stream because the MTA, if we do not fix it and make up for the decades of decay, we have 100-year-old electric switches in those tunnels. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, it will limit the city's growth. I believe that is the most significant factor for New York City because if we don't fix it, uh, you will not have the same growth that we could have in the city. Governor Cuomo, thanks as always for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for listening. Brian there on WNYC.